for big plush, little button for little plush. You have an emergency escape window right here. Your two sinks, medicine cabinets, storage. Got more storage back here in this closet. You have floor plates to pull out. You ever have to have the engine worked on. This rear closet floor removes to work on the engine as well. Shoe storage. Lots of nice storage, shelves, lights. We have a washer dryer right here. It's a Whirlpool stacking set. I don't do laundry in them. We do run them to make sure they work. Doors. Sliding pocket door. Locks open and locks closed. Now, some of these sliding pocket doors at the bottom of the door have an air plunger. So that when you release the parking brake, it locks the door in place. That's part of the quiet ride. We don't have the doors rattling going down the road because we have an air plunger that locks them. What's that mean? That means if you're in the bathroom with the door closed and somebody gets in the coach and puts, releases the brakes to drive, you are locked in the bathroom. It's a side effect. Sorry. That little black thing right next to that mirror is a temperature sensor for the bedroom. You have storage under the bed. And when you're laying in the bed, we have a switch right there, which has two dots for high, one dot for low. That's for your ceiling fan. And you have your light switches right here. And the ability to hit the locks and lock the doors or unlock the doors from here. Light master, turn all the lights off right here. Turn them all on. Now, one of the things that's kind of nice is that you can set a bedroom scene and turn it on and off without turning all the lights on. You have the ability to turn the panel lights off. If you don't want to lay here and look at these lights, you can turn them off. Motion. The security lights can be put in motion sensor mode by pressing that button. Accent lights, ceiling lights, overhead lights. The overhead lights also are touch lights so that you can turn them off individually, but you have to turn the power on here. <clears throat> in the hallway, we have two temp sensors. One down there for the floor heat, one up here for zone two. We have our half bath, has the same toilet. Same thing with the, with the shades. You have to be in here to put the shade up. Medicine cabinet, extra toilet chemical there, and then here is another G6 panel with resettable breakers on it. Light switch, outlets, the outlets are all GFI, they're on GFI breakers in the electrical box up front. I'll show you that when we get up there. I'm going to skip the touch panel for right now. Down there we have our CO and LP detector, and we have a vacuum hose output. Around on this side, we have a dust sweep. You take your foot, kick that open, sweep up to it, and it vacuums your dirt away. And you have a little spice cabinet in the wall here. The sink. Nice deep double sided sink. Storage. Have a drawer up here. Your microwave plugs in in the back. You have a drinking faucet there. You have a tilt out. You have a pull out here. Dishwasher. Okay, the dishwasher has to be locked for travel. To lock it, we're going to press and hold the lock button. One, two beats, close, and it will lock. 
you will notice there are no buttons on the outside. To unlock it, you just knock three times. Knock, knock, knock on the panel, and it'll unlock. There's the water filter from the fridge. These are the remotes for the front TV. There's your Blu-ray remote, your TV remote, your soundbar remote, and your matrix remote. Pull out. Gives you more counter space and drawers. Your touch-up paint. And these are full length drawers. Storage up here is our Blu ray player, our router, and our wine guard antenna. On top of the router is a sticker. That sticker gives you the coach Wi Fi. ID and password to be able to log into it. Your wine guard antenna, press the power button, hold. It says power on, it connects the antenna. And it is set up for Dish Network. Press the power button, hold. It says power and off in progress. You let go of it and it puts the antenna away. Set up and, and tear it out or set up and away are about five minutes when we do that. I have a sound bar up here on this side of the cabinet. We have our screen, our connection block for the satellite. There are three USBs up there, or HDMI, excuse me, three HDMIs. One of them goes directly to this TV, the other two go to the matrix. Okay, there's a wall plate in the bedroom TV that is similar, so you can have a satellite set up in the bedroom that's bedroom specific. TV up and down right here, and a wall outlet. The couch makes into a bed. All right, I'm going to go back to the touch screen. Tap the touch screen. 99% of the time, it's going to be on the home page. On the home page, we have a bunch of buttons. This section of the screen stays there no matter where you're at. So this section is the only section that changes. So we hit home. We get the home screen. AGS, inverter, diesel heat. That's your aqua hot. Electric heat, aqua hot also. Water pump, engine preheat. Engine preheat, do not use when you are driving. That has to be off when the engine's running. What it does is it runs your engine antifreeze through the aqua hot and warms your engine up. So if you have the aqua hot on, you can hit the engine preheat and it will warm the engine up. Turn it off when you're driving because your engine will run the antifreeze through the aqua hot, which will help keep the aqua hot hot. Any light that's any of these buttons that are illuminated, will be on. Inverter. Press the inverter. It's going to ask you to confirm it. Hit start. And the inverter's on. Now with the inverter on, it's going to use battery power to operate your TVs, your microwave, your refrigerator, and a number of outlets throughout the coach. AGS is auto gen start. Press the button. It's going to ask you to confirm. Hit start. Turns your AGS on. What's the AGS do? The AGS will start the generator if the air conditioners need to come on. It will start the generator if your batteries get low. Okay? So it's kind of handy. The AGS automatically disconnects with the ignition on. So anytime you start the coach, the AGS kicks off. So when you get to where you're going, you have to remember to turn it back on. You have your monitors, fresh gray and black, water pump, all that. Monitor your AC input, your DC batteries right there. 
tells you what your batteries are doing and all of that. Interior lights here, you can turn it on and off. You can set these three buttons down here to whatever you want them to be. Previous owner had this set up. It says games. Hit the middle one. It's bed sleep. This is his nighttime bed mode. Now you set this and go to bed. Hit the light master by your, in your bed and turn it off. And if you want to get up in the middle of the light, you hit the light master and it turns on just these lights. So you don't have to wake the whole coach up if you get up in the middle of the night. These are programmable. The last one says rain. I don't know what that is. Again, I didn't change anything from the customer's unit. There we go. All right. If you want to program one of these, you hold the button continuously, and it says rename, save, or close. All right. Right now we're going to close it. So what we do is we go to our light settings, and we set the lights exactly how we want them to be. And then we come over here. So if we go to our, go to our lights. There's our lights. Basic mode is by room. Control mode is individual lights. So I can tap an individual light and turn it off or adjust its brightness. <clears throat> so as I pick lights, as I'm going through, I'm turning them off. Okay, so now this is a light setting that I just set. <clears throat> if I press and hold this rain button, I can hit save. Now, this is games. This is bed, sleep. There we go. And then this is rain. You can program them any way you want. These are your shades. Again, in control mode, you can pick the shades individually. So once you pick the shades, I hit this shade, this shade, this shade, and I can pick day or night. If I pick night and hit down, it's going to put the shades I just selected down. Now, I did something different here because I added this shade. When I go here, here, and here, pick the same three shades and go up. It won't put that one back up because I'm not in the bathroom. I can do the same thing. I can pick these shades and I can hit the day shade and put the day shades down or up. Okay? So it's very simple once you get used to it. Now in basic mode, when I hit basic mode, and this applies to lights or shades. Well, there we go. In basic mode, it does it by rooms. So you have the cab, the living room, the stool, the bedroom, and the master bath. When I hit the little picture of the bus, these are my exterior lights, or I can turn the motion sensor on, or I can hit slide awnings. And the blue arrows are awnings in and out. The white arrows are slide outs in and out. If I hit the thermostat, I come up with my temperature. You'll see that we're broke up into zones. Bedroom, kitchen, living room, bay. Down at the bottom, we have floor heat. Okay. If I want the floor heat on, I turn it on. It's not available because I don't have the diesel, the aqua hot on. Sorry. I hit bedroom. I can hit auto. I can hit cool. I can hit heat. I can hit off. So, first time you touch it from off, it goes to auto. Auto, you have a cool temperature and a heat temperature. So, right now, if it gets above 75, it turns on the air conditioner. If it gets below 70, it turns on the heat. 
and the heat is set for both aqua hot and heat pump. Now, up here on the top, if I hit this little corner here, all of the heat zones match except for the bay and the floor heat. Now in the kitchen, there's no aqua hot because the aqua hot zone that's in the kitchen goes to floor heat. The bay has no heat pump because the only thing in the bay is the aqua hot. And again, until I turn the aqua hot on, all I have actually is heat pumps. I tap this, go here, go here, oops, to off, hit that button, and it turns everything off all at once. Hit that and that to off, we're done. We have a kitchen fan, we have a stool fan, and we have a bathroom fan. Turn them on or off, right here. If you want to change the settings, press and hold. Oh. And it brings up the screen for the setting. I can tell it what I want it to do. I can set automatic and tell it what temperature. Do I want it to blow air out? Do I want it to blow air in? Televisions. Exterior, living room, bedroom, and overhead. If I press the TV button, it brings up a screen. This screen has Excite. Oh, yeah, power, Excite, Bluetooth, or the uh, <clears throat> Bose Audio, the Bluetooth, the satellite, the wall plate, and the TV. The wall plate is the auxiliary input that's on that. I showed you the wall plate up there above the unit where the satellites hook up. There's an auxiliary and a satellite. This is the auxiliary. The third one that's up there only goes to the television, and you have to use the TV control to switch to that. But TV, you press the TV button. Now what it's going to do is it turns on the TV. It turns on the Bose audio. It sets the TV to a television setting. And this takes a few seconds. It's not instantaneous. Okay? So we don't have any channels here. We're, not, we're in the building. If I hit the Excite button, it switches the modes on the TV, and again, it's still loading, but when it's all done, there's my radio on the television. Also, the remote that's in here is for the radio. If I hit Blu-ray, it's going to load the Blu-ray player, it's going to switch all my modes, and when I'm all done, this remote section will be the Blu-ray. Now you can put this app on your phone. When you put it on the phone in this screen, these buttons are going to be in a different spot, and you're going to have three screens. There's going to be three white buttons at the bottom, which will move it from that screen to just that screen to just that screen. And again, this is all going to be easy and simple when you're used to it. Hit the power button and it turns off. Hit the X up here and we go back to the bus. And we can pick a different TV. We can control all four TVs through this app. This little toolbox is a work in progress. Because you can edit it, you can put different stuff in here. I can see the customers move some stuff around in here from where it comes from the factory. Again, that's up to you. The gear is where we go to pair. We go to pairing, and you'll see a Moto Z3. That's my phone that's been paired here. Okay. I don't know what the ASM is. It's hard to say. It might be one of the salesman's phones. Remote data is on. Explain that as we go. QR code, credentials reset. Now, when you do the app on your phone, you're going to go on 
the Play Store or you're going to go on to app, the iStore or what they call it, Apple Apps or whatever it is. I'm not an Apple person. And you're going to download an app. And it's called Vega, V-E-G-A-T-O-U-C-H. And it's Nebula, N-E-B-U-L-A. Once you have that app on the phone, I showed you up there by the router, there's a tag up there, there's a sticker. You're going to connect your phone Wi-Fi to the coach router. Once you do that, you're going to open the app up. It's going to ask you to connect to a coach. You're going to tell it you want to use QR. That's the easiest way to do this. It's going to need permission from you to turn your camera on. You give it permission, and your screen is going to have a camera screen. It's going to have a square box on it, and in the middle of that screen there is that white box. You're going to put that white box in the square box on your camera, and in your camera and your phone will beep, and it will go back to your screen, and the coach ID and password will be loaded on your screen. The pair button will be green. You go ahead and press the pair button. The wall panel will ask you to accept that, and you accept it, and your phone will be connected to the coach. Now, your phone has to be on this Wi-Fi to get 100% function because remote data is on. If this coach is sitting in your garage or in your barn and it's connected to your Wi-Fi, then you can operate certain parts of the coach from your phone even though your phone is elsewhere. So you can do that wirelessly over the internet. There are a bunch of other things in here. We have images. You can upload images onto this from your phone. You have a user button. The user button is going to give you your network, your system, and your user now. When you hit the network, it's going to bring up a network list. So when the coach, when you are in the coach, you can go in here and you can do this and it will find the networks that are available and you can take one and tap it and put in the password for that network and save it and connect to it. Which is why right now the coach is connected to our shop Wi-Fi. System. Most of this, I'm going to be honest, I could tell you a lot about this. You're going to forget it. The easiest thing to do if you need, if you have an issue, is to contact the people at Firefly Technology, Firefly Integrations. They are great. They will walk you through anything you need to know. They will help you with any updates. But there's an uploader. You can upload software stuff diagnostics you can check any all this stuff close okay we'll go back to this page again we go to software right now they are telling me not to put this update on they're waiting for a new update so contact firefly and when the new update comes through they'll probably have you install this update and then check for update again and then do that update the reason they don't want us to do that is because they have a change going on to that 1.4.0 that they right now they'd rather just have it the way it is until they get everything together. So contact Firefly in the next week or two and go through that with them. Your display settings, you can set your screen brightness. You can tell it to shut up and be quit beeping. You can check your time settings. If you want it muted, you can set it to be muted from 12 a.m. till whenever so it doesn't beep in the middle of the night. Eyebrow puts it right back into sleep. Tap it to wake it up. Now, if you have any questions, hit the question mark button. And then, from the question mark button, little question marks will pop up all over the screen. Press any of those question marks, and it will tell you what that does. Okay, you have a clean mode. 
Press this button. How dirty is your screen? You want to sanitize it, whatever you say, you hit start, and it will shut off the touch screen for a period of time so you can clean it. You have this AA button right here. Press the button, and it puts labels in plain English on all of the buttons. So, pretty simple system. I say it's pretty simple. A lot of people are like, what do you mean simple? This thing is massively complicated. It's what you make of it to some extent. And I don't know what your computer knowledge and ability is. That's going to make it a little different. It's a bit different for every customer. So, I don't know what you don't know. So, I don't know what you don't know. That's all there is to it. And this side console is your Hadley. Now, your Hadley has raise. It has lower. All right. Standard ride. When I press this button, it airs the system up. It will not work right now because I have the jacks down. I have lower. All right, let me put the jacks away and start the coach. Hang on a second. All right, I got the jacks retracted. We're airing up right now. Anytime that right here says not at ride height, it means you are not at ride height. That should go out here in a few more seconds because the coach is airing up right now. Now, looking at the Hadley panel, you can see the standard ride height is blinking green because it's still going up. Once it's all said and done, it should be a solid green light for the ride height being correct. Now, you have the ability to raise or lower the coach. If you press the lower button one time, it will go to a blinking green light. Blinking green light drops your entire coach about two and a half to three inches. This gives you the ability to go under something that's a little too short for you to normally drive under. It also reduces your ability to steer because the wheels start, front tires start to tuck into the wheel wells and you cannot turn lock to lock. Now, if I press and hold, I go to a solid green light by the lower. This puts me all the way down. I can no longer steer hardly at all because now my front tires are tucked completely in the wheel wells. Okay. Now if I go above 10 miles an hour, it's going to automatically return to ride height. It will take it a bit. But if you exceed speed, it automatically returns to ride height. Press the standard ride button again in the middle and let it air up. The raise does the same thing. So if you had to drive over a curb or an obstruction, the difference in the raise is the first time you hit it, you get a blinking green, and that raises the back end of the coach up three inches. This prevents you from dragging your mud flap or your hitch when you're going in and out of driveways. Again, 10 mile an hour speed limit. If you go too fast, it's going to go back down. And if you press and hold the raise light till you get a solid green light, then it raises the front and the back together. And again, speed limit says if you go fast, it's going to drop it right back down. Now, next up is SLS. If I press the SLS button, you get these green arrows blinking. Because we get our, our two green arrows flashing, it means we are level enough that the coach is reasonably level. Otherwise, I would have like the side to side arrows might be red and the front to back might be all green. That would mean you are not sitting level side to side. And again, it's approximate. If I press the set button, and this SLS button together. Oh, man. I haven't done this one in a while. I 
some point here, I should get air leveling. If you press the SLS and the set buttons together, it should allow you to Let's try raising the back of the coach. See if I can get it off level enough to get it to go into leveling. But if you press the SLS and the set buttons together, it goes into auto leveling. Which in this case, because we're not that out of level. There we go. Now it's auto leveling. Now we're going to go back to standard ride height. Mirror control. Battery boost. Press and hold. Tag dump. Auto, off, or, or manual. This takes the air out of your tag axle. That's all it does. Most of my customers put it in auto and leave it there. Pedal adjustment moves your throttle and your brake in and out. Air brakes, or auxiliary brakes, excuse me. Off, low, high. That's your Jake brake. Five switches here. That is for your shade. Press and hold. And you have to hold it for a few seconds before it moves. It's got a delay. And it puts that shade down. Go to the next one. So you can use those as visors when you're driving to keep the sun out of your eyes. Now, rotary controller. Down in the lower left hand corner, right here, this knob controls that. So I can change it from settings. If I want to check my settings, I press the button down on the knob and I can go to screen position. And I can move the screen up or down in the display area. And I press the button to hold it. I can go to diagnostics. I can do my 1939. I can look at my RBC. RBC info is all of 